Thank you. I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me. It's a great honor and pleasure to be here. Uh, so let's see, I met Menahem back in 2009. Uh, it was during all the hope and change. And uh, maybe, maybe you should uh, hmm? tell me where you go, what state you were. Uh, okay, so I'm getting to that. So okay. first, <laughs> first we met in 2009, but I really got to know him better the following year, 2010, when uh, he was visiting UCLA for um, like during the spring semester and I guess part of the summer. And in May and June, I was driving to UCLA. I was uh, at Irvine back then. So I was driving to UCLA just by myself and then I had Katie and then I was driving to UCLA with Katie and my mom. Um, Katie is my daughter. And uh, so it was a very uh, important time in my life, uh, personally as well, <coughs> mathematically. And just, yeah. Yeah, so she was born on Thursday, Wednesday I had to teach, of course, so I probably was there on Tuesday. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I think, and then I took a long weekend, but yeah, the following week. <laughs> no, I took a long weekend, so I figured I deserved it. But uh, yeah, she was very conveniently born on the day before the last day of classes. So I didn't miss much teaching. And uh, as everybody else was pointing out, Menachem was so generous with both his time and ideas, and I really, really benefited from our visits. Um, so let's see. Now for the math part of my talk, I'm going to be talking uh, about the tree property of the first and double successor of a singular cardinal. So, well, everybody knows what the tree property at kappa states, uh, that every kappa tree, uh, so height kappa and uh, levels less than size kappa has an unbounded branch. So the tree property at uncountable cardinals is a, can be viewed as a generalization of Koenig's infinity lemma. And so, for example, we know that Holds at omega fails at omega one. So, what about cardinals above omega one? That was the first uh, consistency result, and this was due to Mitchell in '72 that from a weakly compact one can obtain a model where the tree property holds at omega two. And possibly around this time, Magidor and others asked, well, okay, so we can get it at omega two. Is it possible to obtain the tree property everywhere at every regular cardinal greater than omega one? Can we? get the tree property simultaneously at every regular cardinal greater than omega one. And part of the motivation for this question is well, how much compactness can there consistently be in the universe? So the tree property can be viewed as one of the key like, tests um, on uh, compactness properties. Okay, okay so continuing, uh, well, motivated by this uh, long-term project, the next result was due to Abraham, who showed, uh, I guess, in 83, I know some people are waiting for me to say this, so during the Reagan administration, three property can hold consistently at 
omega-2 and omega-3. And this was starting from, um, so the large cardinal hypothesis here is much larger, starting from a, a super compact and a weakly compact cardinal. And then, <coughs> In the 90s, Cummings and Foreman show that one can actually get the tree property at all of the elephants for n greater than omega. And this is starting from omega many supercompact cardinals. So then, okay, what happens if one goes beyond? Uh, the first uh, or beyond the singular cardinal. So, so the tree property at successor of a singular, the very first theorem to that effect was uh, due to Menachem and Shalach, who showed that. It is cons um, if you have an omega many supercompact cardinals, SC uh, in my talks always stands for supercompact cardinals, kappa ends an increasing sequence, uh, and let mu be the supremum of the successor of their supremum, then the tree property holds at mu, uh, the, supreme, the successor of supremum of omega many supercompact cardinals. Okay, and so to uh, parallel with this, what about tree property at the double successor of a singular? The first theorem uh, in that direction was in the same paper, so due to uh, Cummings and Foreman, that it is consistent to have a singular strong limit cardinal kappa of cofinality omega such that the tree property holds at kappa double plus. And in their model, SCH fails here at kappa. And it turns out, uh, and as we know, this is necessary to obtain the tree property of the double successor of a singular strong limit due to a null theorem of Specker. So, singular strong limit. In order to do that, we need to get failure of SCH. So right away, going back to the original question of you know, the project of trying to get the tree property everywhere, or at least at larger and larger uh, intervals of regular cardinals, we see that a positive answer would require many violations of SCH and pre type forcings. So in this talk, I'm going to uh, present two theorems about combining getting models where the tree property holds both at the single and the double successor of a singular cardinal. And as we see from uh, these classical results, well, so we would have to have a construction where SCH fails. And we would also, because uh, in, we have to pay for it, have uh, at some point started with omega many supercompact cardinals. Okay. But now, 
one, uh, so for a while, a major obstacle to combining um, results in both of these uh, categories is that failure of SCH, uh, there is an inherent tension uh, between failure of SCH and compactness principles like the tree property at the successor of a singular. So, um, Let me say it as a fact. There is a tension between failure of SCH at some singular kappa together with, and I should say, trying to get the tree property at kappa plus. And for a while, it was even uh, uh, it was open whether this is possible until it I show that it is indeed consistent starting from omega many super compact that this can happen. Okay. And what he used was, well, that if I have to summarize his proof in terms of what the two main ingredients were, uh, there are so one is diagonal supercompact prick reforcing modifying the prick reforcing from a uh, theorem of Gittig and Sharon and also branch lemmas Okay, so uh, where do the branch lemmas come in? Well, in most of these arguments of trying to get the tree property in uh, your some generic extension, uh, usually go uh, as follows. So you take some elementary embedding, this gives you a branch through the tree. However, at first the branch is in some outer model and then you need a branch lemma to pull back to the desired model and show that the branch still exists there. Okay. And now I think I'm ready to uh, state the first theorem, which is that, well, one, it is indeed consistent from omega many supercompacts to get the tree property at kappa plus the tree pro together with the tree property at kappa double plus for kappa singular strong limit. Okay. So the model for this construction, well, it combines the Mitchell the variation of the Mitchell forcing, which was used by uh, Matt and James for um, the construction of getting the tree property at the double successor of a singular, together with an interleaved diagonal supercompact prick reforcing, which was uh, used in uh, Itai's theorem. Mm -hmm. And so, overview, don't worry. So next, I want to say just a little bit uh, more on the specifics of this, uh, of how this theorem goes. So we start with, uh, let's just draw the picture. So this is you know, the cardinal structure in our ground model. So we have omega many super compact cardinals, etc. cetera. Let, uh, say nu is the supremum of the kappa n's. Let me call kappa zero, denote kappa zero by kappa. Let nu be the successor of the supremum of the supercompact cardinals and oh, you know, weakly compact cardinal lambda above it. So the idea is to use, um, like I said, um, Super compact, it diagonal super compact precre type forcing interleaved in the Mitchell poset. Okay. 
So this is V. So in the final model, Vg, what's going to happen is lambda will become mu plus, mu will become kappa plus, and the cofinality of kappa will become omega. Okay. So let me uh, give uh, briefly the definition of the main forcing. So conditions are of the form A P dot um, R, where A is Uh, element in the coin posit to add lambda subsets, lambda many subsets of kappa. P is forced to be a condition in the pre posit, so I will. Okay. Let me write it here. So the pre, uh, by PR, I will denote the diagonal supercompact precre forcing. And let me just say what this is. Well, one starts with omega many measures UN, such that each measure UN is a measure on P kappa kappa N, and then forces to add the generic sequence XN and less than omega, such that the following happens. So the pre forcing adds a sequence xn n less than omega such that its union, oh, oh, I didn't, okay. Right it here, its union becomes new, and the sequence witnesses that all of the cardinals in kappa, so all the kappa n's are singularized to have cofinality omega, and that mu becomes the new successor of kappa. Okay, now what is um, the last coordinate r? Well, the domain of r is a subset of lambda of size less than mu, and for each alpha in the domain of R, R of alpha is forced to be an element in the coin posit of adding one subset of mu by A posit I will denote by add star precre restricted to alpha. So what is this? Well, the first part add restricted to alpha, it's the natural thing, it's just the posit to add alpha many cohen subsets of kappa. Now one can show that for many alpha by the weak compactness, for many alphas below lambda, it makes sense the normal measures that are used for the precre posit project to the intermediate extension, and it makes sense to dis, uh, define the pre posit restricted to that model. Okay. So for those of you who are uh, familiar with this posit, if you take away the second coordinate, just the first and the third coordinate, this is just a fairly straightforward generalization of the original Mitchell posit to get the tree property at omega 2. And as such, the ordering is also very similar. So, I mean, it's a generalization of the original order. So let me write that. Okay. So we have that and I'm actually going to denote it script of M, A prime P, P prime R prime is stronger than A P R if, well, uh, 
a prime p prime is below a p just in the two-step iteration of adding Cohen subset star precre. Also, well, what about R? Again, it's the natural thing. Domain of R prime has to extend the domain of R. And the last condition, so we want for every alpha in the domain of R, R prime of alpha to be less than or equal R of alpha, but of course these are names for conditions in opposite, so this is forced by A prime P prime restricted to alpha, where this is, um, this denotes the appropriate condition corresponding to A prime P prime when you project it to this model up to level alpha. Okay, and this is the main, uh, this is the main forcing. So in, uh, it is in VM, uh, generic extension by M, where the tree property holds at lambda and at the successor of kappa, which becomes mu. Uh, okay, so then let G be M generic, so in VG, these are some, let me start with some of the easier facts. In VG, cofinality of kappa is omega, kappa plus is mu, kappa double plus is lambda, and by generalizing uh, the argument from the Cummings-Forman paper, we also get that the tree property holds at lambda. Now, the main task, the main difficulty, is showing that the tree property holds at mu. Okay. Okay, so going back to you know, the um, uh, construction by Itai, who showed that if you have, uh, if you force with uh, the coin posit to blow up the power set of kappa and then do diagonal precreate kappa, the tree property holds at the successor. So in particular, note that So M projects to add kappa lambda star precre, and the tree property does hold in this model. Another thing that we notice, there is an outer model uh, defined by a uh, ext uh, extension for a posit M star, where M star, let me give this definition, has the same underlining set as M, and the order is, so you keep one, you keep two from above, but three M star is changed as follows. You have for all alpha in domain of R prime, I mean, in domain of R, just one forces that R prime alpha is less than or equal to R alpha. And M star projects to M. And moreover, M star can be viewed as a this is also used um, in uh, generalizing original argument, back in the original argument for showing the tree property at the double successor at lambda. So M star can be viewed as a product between the following 
two opposites at star pre cre times you know, some forcing Q, where Q is a mu closed forcing. And because Q is closed enough, one can conclude by its eyes uh, arguments by viewing this as, you know, by viewing this first as forcing by Q and then at star pre cre that in V, so if G star is M star generic, in V G star, the tree property holds at mu. Okay. So then we have the following picture. So you have V G here, V G star here. So given any tree in V G, well, one can find a branch in V G star. And then what one would expect to do is some sort of a branch preservation lemma to get B from V G star back to V G. Well, the problem with uh, that is that this quotient is uh, a very unpleasant quotient. I mean, because of the pre -cre part, it's not even countably closed. So there is really no natural way or no way that I know of generalizing branched uh, preservation techniques to this quotient. However, what uh, it turns out and what makes the proof work in the end is that one can define like a series of intermediate models in between and which will, uh, which give much better quotients for which one can use branch preservation lemmas. So to that effect, let me define a new type of ordering. So let P be a precre name. And one can define the order less than M of P. Again, same underlining set as M and one and two stay the same, the first two conditions of the order. But three is changed as follows. For every alpha in domain of R prime, we have that A prime, let me actually use Q instead of P. A prime Q forces that R prime of alpha is less than or equal to R of alpha. So just stepping back and comparing the three uh, orders, well, in the uh, main order, there is, uh, I mean, interference from both coordinates, the at coordinate and the pre -cre coordinate. In the definition of M star, since one forces this, the interference is removed and that's why we can present this posit as uh, the product where Q is closed. Here, this order keeps the interference from the add kappa lambda coordinate, but removes the interference from the pre -cre coordinate. Now in particular here, Q is fixed. So what one can do is show that MP is isomorphic to the following two-step iteration. So add kappa lambda star pre -cre times, and let me call this uh, Q of uh, lowercase q, where this forcing is kappa closed. Yeah, I didn't want to use P because I'm using it here. So then the picture becomes as follows. Okay, so we have our VG star VG. Um, let, let me fix some generics. Let G 
GQ will be you know, M sub Q generic. And one can also show that uh, the posets project as follows. I'll uh, draw the picture in a little bit. Let's you know, script. Um, OK, so here I'll use P, MP generic script. This is for uh, Uh, condition P in the pre creep posset, let script Q of P be uh, Q of P generic. And then we have, and let A script A be add kappa lambda generic and uh, script P be pre creep generic <coughs> over VA. So then this is what the picture looks like. We have so VG star, VG. Now, for each such P taken from the generic for the precre, the model VGP stands in between the models VG and VG star. And because both uh, M sub P and M star can be uh, viewed at one point as a product, namely you can factor out the pre forcing. So this model projects into V A so script Q, and this model projects into V A Q sub P, such that there is also a projection between those two. And the point of doing that is to get away from the pre forcing. Why? Because it is the pre forcing which makes this original quotient so untractable. Namely, it makes it not even countably closed. But this is the nice quotient. <coughs> and this is where the branch preservation lemmas are proved. So we do. branch lemmas here, so in this quotient, to show that whatever the remnants of the branch in this model actually belong to this model for every P taken from the generic for the pre -cree. And then one uses uh, like a little density argument that the models GP in a sense approximate VG. So if the branch belongs to every one of these models, it will have to belong to VG. And I'm not going to actually define uh, in its uh, full technicality the branch lemmas I was using, but I want to say that they're all in one way or, on, or another motivated by the original branch lemmas that Menahem and uh, Sahron used in their proof, the original proof that the tree property can hold at alpha omega plus one. Um, so let me just say motivated by branch lemmas and also the notion of systems. And the reason we're using systems here is because we're working in a quotient where we don't actually have the tree. And systems from the Magidor Shala paper. Right. So this is how I'm going to say for uh, the construction of this theorem. And the next result uh, I want to mention is actually joined with Spencer Unger. That this uh, construction can actually be obtained at alpha omega squared. So again, from omega many super compact cardinals and uh, weakly compact cardinal lambda above them can consistently get the tree property at alpha omega squared plus one 
alpha omega squared plus 2, where alpha omega squared is strong limit. Okay. And the idea there is to, so some of the ingredients are the same. I mean, there will be a Mitchell type posit, there will be a diagonal supercompact precre, but now we want to put interleaved collapses in the diagonal supercompact precre in order to make um, what I denoted as kappa uh, equal alpha omega squared. So we, so some key points, use interleaved collapses for making kappa become alpha omega squared in the pre forcing in the pre part, and also guiding generics for those collapses. Okay. So guiding generics are needed and they're um, a way to make sure that pre conditions with the same stem are compatible, which is crucial in the kind of branch lemmas uh, that are used in the construction. So now, the main difference between uh, the construction uh, of the first theorem and the second one is that here we do the pre after the Mitchell. So the main difference is we do the pre forcing not interleaved with the Mitchell as the over there, but after, after the Mitchell. So let me be a little bit more precise. So one starts with in V kappa n, n less than omega, supercompact cardinals, and let C be the posit uh, to make them successors of each other. So as before, just kappa will denote the first one, kappa naught. And then in V, after forcing with C, um, well, so there is also, a, we prepared the model so that in V after forcing with C, we can force with M in a way that there are guiding generics. And then we force with precre with collapses, where the posit M here is as above, but without the second coordinate. So it's simpler. Now, on one hand, so in proving the tree property at mu steel holds here, the branch lemmas now will have to take care of also the interleaving of, no, dealing with this posit. So this is an added complication. Um, another thing that um, this um, construction does where you do the pre after the Mitchell, in a way it makes the tree property at mu plus uh, slightly easier, but it makes showing the tree property at the double successor at lambda uh, more problematic. So here, mm. so the key technical lemma in this construction, well, one among others, is that a certain quotient posit has the uh, good enough approximation property to get that the double successor, which I think earlier denoted by lambda, uh, the weakly compact cardinal, which becomes the double successor, still has the pre property. OK, so this is all I'm going to say about uh, those two theorems. Uh, let me just mention 
what's a very kind of natural open question, and it's certainly on our to-do list. Well, can one do this, but uh, for kappa plus n for every n, where kappa is a singular strong limit? And uh, right now our conjecture is optimistic that you probably can you know, with some work. Okay. And uh, this is where I went.
I just, no, she probably did that. Not well, that's all. Hmm? Well, you do not have that down to question principle. Well, you, you, yeah, that's, that's a theorem of self sitting, it's a yeah. method, you know, that you, no, no, but, but stationary reflection completes with one of the uh, Italian. Yeah, uh, you, the negation of AP. You, you, you have approachability. Yeah. Uh, stationary reflection, Italian number one, implies approachability. So approachability, which is also a failure of, of compactness, cannot, uh, doesn't live together, cannot live together in Italian uh, number one. If you live together, I don't know, But for instance, can the tree property? All together with the stationary reflection, alpha omega, that's that's all. No, 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 no. Sorry? I think, I think we know about the tree property. You have this model, but what is open, I think, is the approachability and the, and the tree property. Sorry? The approachability and tree property, we don't know what kind of relation between the two. But it's also not known. Yeah. Well, no, but you do know that you have your model with three square and reflection. Yeah. You do have that. He's asking whether you can have the tree property together with the reflection. Uh -huh. uh, but let me make a suggestion that might solve all these problems. <laughs> what, <laughs> what if alpha omega squared is the first thing you are strong limit? Uh, then maybe that's the way to attack the tree property everywhere project. Because so getting the tree property at alpha omega plus 1 and alpha omega plus 2, if alpha omega is not required to be strong limit, there is possible, and that's actually due to uh, Laura and Cy Friedman. And also Spencer and probably others have results that if you don't require alpha omega to be strong limit, you can get the tree property for some interval afterwards. And then, but where you run into trouble is exactly where you need to find the SCH. But maybe if we just settle for alpha omega squared being the first strong limit. Well, uh, you know, you know this argument, of course. Uh, what you avoid is exactly the, uh, avoid getting to the SCH, defending the SCH, because the, yeah. the place well, where, here we <coughs> where you continue up on the fences, but yeah. something less than alpha omega is the one that takes care of, if it's not strong limit, the one that takes care of. Uh, Yes, of course, we don't need ACH, but that's better. Okay, any other comments, questions? Thanks a lot. <laughs>